I'm super excited to get started on some of the finishes. Um, I actually might paint this and move it somewhere else so it doesn't get dusty, but this fireplace I picked up for $100 on Facebook Marketplace. It, I don't think it's actually antique, even though they said that it was, I'm not sure. But I'm just gonna start out by painting it with the Cottage Colors white linen. And then if I want to paint it a different color later, I can. And I think I'm gonna do like a dark wax just to bring out all the details. So just a simple finish. The nice thing about this is it has a built-in sealer, so once I get it all painted, I can distress it, decorative wax, and I'm done. While Jamie's getting that painted, I'm gonna go ahead and repair this because this is where the mantle's gonna go. This is on the back wall on the stage where the old fireplace used to be, and it's got this big gaping hole in the adobe brick. There is an actual chimney that's functional. It goes all the way up from the basement. I'm just gonna go ahead and repair this. I'm using old bricks that we found around the property that are also adobe. I'm using a special mixture of Portland cement, lye, and sand in equal parts. And hopefully that doesn't expand or do any cracking. Did a lot of research on that and what would be best for this old adobe. So next up is sanding. I always use my random orbital. Um, this one's a DeWalt, but I've had a bunch of different ones. I always use 220 grit sandpaper because if you go lower, sometimes you get squiggles. And if you go higher in number, then it just doesn't take enough off. Always go slow and see how much is coming off before you really go crazy because different surfaces will react differently. Maybe our lives were not meant could foresee the fall Maybe it's time to decide what to do with the fact that it happens to us all From time to time it all comes around And no one knows the end A lot of times I get asked, how come sometimes things distress differently than others? Some of it is surface, but this piece had a chippy finish underneath. So areas where it was chipping before came off really fast. And so the chippy kind of came through in this finish too, which I really love. Have you ever been afraid of dark wax? Because there's a few tips and tricks. One is always make sure that whatever you're gonna be waxing is sealed whether it's a all-in-one like this has a sealer built in or clear wax at first or put a coat of Big Top on it. That's gonna create a barrier between the paint and your wax and it'll allow it to be a little bit more movable and wipeable. Another trick is I like to use a small brush and then I just come in and I just put the wax where I want it. Then it doesn't get super dirty, I don't waste wax and it just sticks down in the cracks to make the detail pop and you wipe back right away, not letting it sit too long. I love the new cottage colors because I don't have to do the extra coat of wax or liquid sealer to protect my piece and I can just wipe out. If you see that you're wiping out too much, just be gentle or sometimes I'll take my um, rag or whatever and wipe, put it in like a ball so it doesn't get down in the cracks. And then I just go like this and it just takes it off the tops and leaves it where I want it. So you can really see how light it is here and where I have the wax here and how it changes that. And if I really buff hard, I can pull that wax out because of the sealer. If for whatever reason you're putting it on and you just can't pull the wax off, you can put clear wax over the top of the dark wax and use it like an eraser. I won't have to do that here because it's really working out the way I want it to. It's just morning feeding time at the zoo. Hey chickies. Hi my boys. Are you guys doing good? Good breakfast? The little black specks, don't worry about that. That's just, you know, poop. <laughs> Sheep poop. Ooh, two eggs. 
All right, hi sisters. I know you've got an egg under there. Hi. Hi. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have to move you. Move over. Hey. <laughs> Sister. All right, I gotta put the phone down. Five eggs. Sorry guys. <laughs> It's time for primer on this wall. We're leaving some of the brick exposed where the plaster had already been peeled off. We've got to paint or seal, do something with this brick because the adobe is so dried out and crumbly. It's a pretty soft brick. We've got to protect it. That way this building's here another hundred years from now. We're holding this up because it's not secure. It's actually probably going to go to a safe place while we do the floors and stuff because we don't want to get all dusty. Yeah, we still have to sand in here. This is just a primer coat, so we'll go ahead and get this painted up with the right color. It's not going to end up being this bright, and it should look pretty good. We're happy with the way the brick's looking painted. I'm super excited to be getting to the paint part. I know we could like spend all day nitpicking, but I want some of like the reclaimed look to come through, so I don't mind a few cracks and imperfections. If you guys have questions about dark or black wax, comment below. I'm happy to help you out. I know that a lot of people kind of get scared by it and I want to help you be able to do what you want to do with it. If you need wax or paint or anything like that, be sure to check out JanuaryVintage.com. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to January Vintage for more DIY. Before we went and picked up the new sprayer, we were trying to roll the primer on and it was a lot of work. This brick soaks up a ton of paint and primer. <laughs>